Greetings, fellow mortals, and welcome to the Two Foolish Mortals podcast. Today is March 27th, 2021, and this is episode 14 of the podcast. My name's Kat. And my name's Russ. And we are joined by the two furry mortals, yep. Smokey and Bandit. So, say hi to them. They appreciate your enthusiasm. Okay. Just as much as they appreciate us. So this is a <laughs> weekly podcast where we talk about Disney, news, information, travel, all that good stuff. And uh, we got to go over everything that we discussed this week on twofoolishmortals.com, which is our website. Yeah. So we have a couple interesting topics to get to today, and I am really looking forward to sharing my thoughts. It's been an interesting week over here, not a standard week for us. No, so definitely not. A lot of what we talked about on the website was really just me talking and sharing my thoughts with you, um, as opposed to like the collective that it usually is when mm. it's me and Russ. So this will be really interesting to kind of get your perspective. Yeah. And uh, hear what you have to say. So the first thing, um, I actually just want to talk on, t touch on two particular topics that we discussed today, uh, this week on the website. The first is the Park Pass reservation system. Yeah. So, if you're not already familiar, because hey, maybe you're not. Um, when the parks reopened in July of 2020, they opened with a limited capacity. And Disney's way of managing that was through this thing they called the Theme Park pass reservation system or the park pass reservation system or some people just call it making a park reservation <laughs> um lots of different ways to say it but essentially if you buy a ticket for walt disney world you can't just go to the parks anymore you also have to make a reservation for the park that you plan on visiting i i'm i'm not i'm not against it makes sense well, easy way to control yeah, I mean, you know, there's it only seems, so many reservations available, period. It Duh. seems pretty straightforward. I will be honest with you. When I first heard that this was going to happen, I was like, weird, right? Like, this is, <laughs> this is a system that, I mean, it just seems a little bit more tedious than it needs to be because it's one extra step when planning a Disney vacation. But truthfully, after poking around in the system, it's not as bad as I think some people may make it out to be. Yeah, and I think um, one of the things too is I think even when you first when we first heard about it and we started seeing it being implemented, it was a, it was a shot to the magic, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was wow. They're limiting people from entering. I may not if I have a ticket. I may not be able to go. Yeah. That's crazy, and you know what I mean. So. The shock, shock and awe factor <coughs> of the system being released, I think that's uh, that played a huge role in this whole situation of approval, disapproval of it. Yeah, and there were some people who were not pleased when it first came out. Well, I think the thing is with anything is if you're displeased with something that someone else is doing, then come up with a better way to do it yourself. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's natural, you know? it's It's totally natural when they change the way... Of when anyone introduces anything new like this, people are gonna have things to say. Well, I think you know, you know, I'm sure Disney totally had a perfect A to B plan book that they <laughs> just pulled out of the the archives of how to handle the pandemic and people <laughs> in the parks. Probably, I'd you I'd know? anticipate that they had some way of they had at managing least, this. Yeah, they had something, but of course they had to curtail it. And you know what? Did they get it right the first time? Some people agree, some people don't. It is what it is. Yeah. And here we are. So what I essentially did is I I had a few people reach out to me and they were like, so how exactly does the system work and is it easy? Like, blah, blah, blah. And so I know that not everyone has the ability to play with the system because you can only get in there. You can only make a park reservation if you have a valid theme park ticket. And since I do, because mm -hmm. I'm an annual pass holder, I thought, you know what? This is a perfect opportunity for me to go in, yep. see how this works, see if it's easy, and 
from there, share that information with you guys. So that's mm -hmm. what I did, and I did it in two separate ways. So you can find a full breakdown of how to use the Park Pass system on twofoolishmortals.com. You can also visit our YouTube channel and, and actually go through the entire process with me um, on my phone through my My Disney Experience app. It's a great video. It's It was very well done. I tried. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. You know, it's... You know, I, I make a lot of how-to stuff for work and stuff like that, and it, it was perfect. It was A to B. Yeah. It so, was, you know. um, now I will say this. I didn't have any trouble um, finding days when park passes were available. Of course, I am an annual pass holder. So, I know that we have a little bit more availability than some other people. It, it just depends. Um, I'm not going to get too into that because I don't fully understand how that goes. Well, here's a question for you, because sure. I actually, now that I'm just thinking about this now, did you happen, because this is uh, being uh, recorded just after spring break, or yeah. is it still technically spring break? I think it depends on when spring break it, ends. It either, but it either happened, or it's happening, Yeah. either way. Did you notice that you, even as an annual pass holder, were blocked out? No. You actually still had the ability to get a reservation? Yeah, I looked at a bunch of different dates. I, I showed... Because everyone kept talking about how it was locked down. Yeah, I well, it wasn't exactly at spring break when I was making the reservations, if I remember correctly. Of course, you guys will be able to see the actual dates um, on those mm -hmm. two things. I think one was like April 1st. Which okay. I think is after or technically after or the end of spring break. The right. other one I did was for like March 30th. So again, I think that's after spring break. It's technically after, yeah. Either way, it wasn't during the most crowded time. Um, but I, I didn't have any trouble getting a park pass. I will say this. Like I said, it seemed a little intimidating at first. But after getting in there and making a reservation it is so easy to do especially if you have your my disney experience already linked up and ready to go which you probably would have anyway yeah so and i say i, I think we can both agree that crowds very loosely at like folk fed like the crowds yeah and that's, actually it's unreal that's a good segue to the second thing i'm going to discuss today yep. which is i didn't even read the card um, so the second thing I want to discuss today is, well, it was kind of an opinion piece that I wrote on twofoolishmortals.com about a bit of news. So it's posted in news and information, but there's definitely some opinion in there. And that is, so the Disney CEO, Bob Chapek, did an interview with Bloomberg. And in this interview, um, he basically said that guests currently visiting Walt Disney or Walt Disney World and other theme parks around the world um, are more satisfied now than they were pre-pandemic. Like satisfaction numbers are up. That's right. Yeah, we talked about this through the week. Yeah, and my immediate response to that was like duh. duh. <laughs> It really, um, it really is like I we and we did not plan on saying that collectively. Like no. that's just what I'm saying. Like yeah, uh huh. Yeah. And are you really surprised? So I didn't get into the nuts and bolts of what he was talking about specifically. If you're interested in that, go check out Bloomberg or go do a Google search, and you'll be able to find his like whole interview that he did. But mm -hmm. um, the thing that kind of got me about this, and the thing that kind of <laughs> kind of sent me you know into a, an opinionated piece yeah or uh, into a little bit of a rampage was okay so of course guests are more satisfied with their experience at theme parks right now there's only 35 percent capacity at the parks especially at walt disney world i'll speak about that specifically i mean even like tokyo just upped to ten thousand people mm -hmm. on like it, it, the numbers are so low so even though they took away extra magic hours in the mornings mm -hmm. and the evenings even though they took away fast pass plus even though there are other experiences that they took away 35 percent capacity at the parks is like less than an average day yeah. pre-pandemic you know it's another thing i didn't even think about what could you imagine how much less body heat is in that park oh it's probably a much it's more so, pleasant experience oh my god it must be so much cooler so anyway so the whole thing is our last trip 
to Walt Disney World was a doozy. It was brutal. And and frankly, I've described it as unacceptable. And and yes, we went during a holiday season. I'm not going to, like, there's no way around that. I know that crowds are always heavier during the holidays. But, you know, the truth is, most people who travel to Walt Disney World are on some sort of vacation. Here's my thing. Like, vacation time frame. You know, like, school-age kids take Christmas, spring break, whatever. I'm taking this punch away from you because I want to say it. Because you already said it, and it really, really spoke true to all of this. You should not ever need to use... A porta potty in Disney World, unless it's a marathon. Yes. And even then, so this it is, is unacceptable. So my man, I'll tell you, I could go on about this topic yeah, for not, hours. Yeah, like not, this could be a lengthy one. But the thing that I want to like, the, I really want to hammer home is what you just touched on. Yeah, I had the, to. The big thing about Walt Disney World crowds. Prior to the pandemic, there there are really two things. Number one, I remember always having to have a thirty minute plus wait to get to the bathroom. Like unreal. there was lines like out the door and around the corner mm-hmm. for every bathroom. So bad that I remember just going like, "Well, I might as well." Oh, is there a bathroom over here? I might as well just get in line and wait to go to the bathroom. Just in case I can't find a bathroom. You know, and like, on top... And that's not me, like, having children with me or... You know what I mean? Like, that's me being a fully capable adult, um, you know, without any medical concerns or inability to control my facilities, if you will. Shouldn't have to wear a Disney diaper. No, Disney diapers. (laughs) No. (laughs) That's ridiculous. Um, But on top of that, like, there should never be a time at Walt Disney World that you have to, like, have such lines Mm -hmm. just to go to the bathroom. On top of that, there were, there were discussions of porta potties and everything like that to accommodate the number of people that were going to be in the parks for certain holidays. And to me, that is just the most unacceptable thing. And when you put that alongside with the, the fact that, like, even our fast passes, like, we didn't ride almost anything that we didn't have a fast pass for because the lines were just outrageous. And we were there for two whole weeks. Yeah. It was just crazy. It was just absolutely crazy. So I think that just it's not a surprise at all. No. Nope. That guests are Happier. more satisfied now because these are the numbers that, I mean, I'd have to look up to find out exactly what the crowd crowd numbers were like back in the 90s. But, like, this is sim- more similar to what you would have seen in the 90s. And that's assuming that the parks meet capacity and have the full 35% there. I'm trying to see if I can look it up real quick. It's, it's a doozy to look up those numbers, so. But, um, I don't know. Do you have any... Any other thoughts? I think we, we, without going into crazy detail, like you said, uh, it, it it makes total sense, man. You know, and that, and that, again, that's like you're saying is like things are closed, things aren't even open. You're not eating indoors. This and the other. There's more regulation, and there's temperature checks, and you have to wear your mask. You have people wearing their masks in eighty plus degree heat, and they're happy. Er, happy er. And I think, but you know, I I think that that's, this is a little bit of speculation here. I think that that's going to be something that Disney's going to have to really take into consideration when we move closer to and then surpass that finish line Mm -hmm. of the pandemic is what exactly is going to happen. Because I'll tell you what, I don't think that they're going to be able to snap their fingers and bring it right back to pre-pandemic levels because I really think that there are plenty of people who are no longer going to want to sit at a restaurant backed up to the people right behind them. No. Like it was before, which is something we definitely experienced when we were at Walt Disney World. I mean, my goodness, the pictures... I almost posted them in this article, but I but I didn't because it just wasn't very good quality. Maybe I'll post them on our Instagram. Um, but like hoop de doo review. Yeah. The, seeing the pictures of hoop de doo review, I'm like, oh my god, there are so many people yeah. just right there shoved up. And I felt that way 
when we were there in real time. And that was before, like, right. taking into consideration, like, the pandemic and everything like that, um, obviously. But, um, and, you know, on top of that, I don't think that there's going to be another moment where people are going to be okay, at least not for a long time, where people are going to be okay shoving, you know... After an entire year or more of having 30,000 people, 35,000 people in a park at maximum being, that being mass, maximum capacity, do you mm -hmm. think that the next day they're going to be okay with 100,000? No. Because I don't. No. You know, so. I doubt it. Highly, highly doubt it. Yeah. So, I mean... We still have to wait and see. Yeah, but man, it's an intense topic. Yeah, I think it really makes you have to look back and go, you know, is the profit really worth it? Well, you know, is the profit really worth it? And more so than that, is the profit still going to be there if people are, like, backing off because they're no longer going to be willing to pay to go and experience much less, so much less? You know, it's one very thing, true, true. It's one thing to point. be like, oh, well, you know, like in the 90s, let's say, sure. you could go and experience 10 rides per day. And then, you know, in, you know, 95, it was, you know, nine rides per day. And then at some point, years later, it became three. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think that you're going to be able to go from experiencing seven rides in one afternoon all the mm. way to being like, well, maybe you can get on mine train. <laughs> maybe. For the price increases and all those things. I, I don't think that that's yeah. going to happen. I don't think it's a feasible business model moving forward. No. so we'll But see. of course, we don't know what we're talking about. No. <laughs> so completely. We'll have to see. Nothing. We'll have to see what happens in the future. But that's it for this week. I have that's it. That's me card's throwing the card. Nothing too crazy, but serious topics. Yeah. So in all of this, I would really love to know what you have to say. Um, I'm really, really curious about your thoughts on all of these things. Not only what you think or thought of the um, Park Pass reservation system, but if, you know if you've used it, how you feel about it, and all that good stuff. I would love to know what you have to say about all that. I'd also love to know if you would go back to Walt Disney World if they snapped their fingers and went back to 100% capacity. So, you can tell us that. You can share your thoughts over on the website, twofoolishmortals.com. Go ahead and summon us. Click the menu, hit the summon button. You can contact us directly. You can also get in touch with us over on Instagram at Two Foolish Mortals on Facebook. We have Two Foolish Mortals on Instagram. You can also join the Jamboree on Two Foolish Mortals. On Facebook. You said Instagram. Yeah, we, we also have an Instagram. I know. You already said Instagram. Oh, I'm just... Yeah, you're, you're plugging away. Yeah. I think this would be a great topic to discuss specifically on the Facebook group, though, on the Jamboree to get everyone involved and actually, actually having a good dialogue back and forth. Yes, absolutely. So join the Jamboree over on Facebook. So that's uh, facebook.com slash group slash Two Foolish Mortals. Boom. Boom. So. Yeah, share your thoughts. Definitely want to hear what everyone else is thinking on this one. Yeah. And we really, as always, we really appreciate that you took some time to join us today. Sit down and take a few minutes out of your day to chat with us. I know this was kind of a short one, but... But it was serious. Serious. So. It was almost a rant, some people would describe it. Oh my it. goodness, it was. It, it might, was a bit it ranty. Might be, it might be classified as such. But anyway, I think we're going to sign off for now. I don't have one today. You don't have one? Oh I, my goodness. I wasn't ready. You're leaving the people <laughs> hanging. Okay, well, <laughs> we had a lot of fun talking to you. and We hope that you had fun too. And until next time, we hope that your weekend is filled with ghoulish delight. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.